Fine Lines clients come from all walks of life, and many of them are repeat customers. One of the regulars is Mark Pataro. They've changed me a little bit. You know, I think it's changed my personality a little bit, but in a good way. They, they become a part of you. I couldn't picture myself without them. Mark's a car salesman by trade, but when the business suit comes off, he lets the world know he's an illustrated man. It's nice to have people look at you differently sometimes. Not necessarily that it makes you tough or it makes you cool or anything like that, but just to keep people on their toes. Shock is the look I get, just that wide open, wow. I like big dramatic pieces. I like colorful tattoos. I got the itch, had to get another one. I've talked to a lot of people about, you know, getting tattoos and stuff, and a lot of times they'll be the first ones to tell you, oh, it doesn't hurt at all. They're lying. It hurts. It's unbelievable. But just like anything else, all the things in life that are worth having, you got to go through something to get them. And if it didn't hurt, what, really, what's the point? You know, it's an experience to get it. If it was easy, everybody would have one. And it's not easy. While he's doing this, it's, it's tough. It's not the kind of thing you can really sugarcoat and make unpainful. The pain is a relevant part of the process. It kind of goes back to the bloodletting rites of passage in tribal cultures. In some places, body art is a painful step on the road to adulthood. This boy in Papua New Guinea is undergoing a grueling rite of passage to become a man, a crocodile man. Tribal elders slice his skin to form patterns of raised scars. The more pain he can stand, the more respect he'll have in the community. The broken lines of scars resemble the scaly skin of a crocodile, and the circles are the crocodile's eyes. Ritual scarring is an ancient practice, and it's still performed in many cultures. People like the newer Ndinka of the Sudan are very famous for what they call the giving of gar. This is the cutting of marks on the forehead that happen at the time that somebody declares that they're an adult. What they're doing is they're cutting right down to the bone, six marks across the forehead. It's an unbelievably dramatic ritual in that sense. Tribal members wear their scars proudly as signs that they've reached adulthood, that they have the right to own property, even the right to have sex. The scars can also terrify their enemies. Sharpened teeth make them even more intimidating. And this unusual dental practice is said to promote good health. These body designs are rigidly prescribed, mandatory marks of tribal membership. But for the clients at Fine Line Tattoos, body art is a matter of personal choice. I don't do them for other people, I do them for myself. They make me an individual. I think that God gave you the perfect canvas and it's your responsibility to fill it in that it's everyone's responsibility to individualize themselves. Most people are shocked by the volume of tattoo work that I have, but they appreciate the art form. It's an individual piece, it's not mass produced, and it's living art, it really truly is living art. They're addictive, they get into you and you just have to have them. I'll stop when there is no more room, from my collar to my sleeves to my ankles. I'd like to be finished. I'd like to be a finished canvas. Mike, looks good. Awesome. Thank you. In many cultures, the body is more than a canvas. The physical form is actually molded and sculpted redesigned in the quest for beauty. The Padong people of Burma believe that a long neck looks more feminine, so some women accentuate the positive with coils made of brass. Young girls begin to wear the coils around the age of 12, and heavier coils are added as they grow older. 
the constant weight pushes down on their shoulders, making the neck appear longer. It isn't comfortable, and it can make it almost impossible for a woman to hold her head up, but the results are considered worth the pain. An elongated skull is a thing of beauty for the Mangbetu of Central Africa. They create this look by wrapping the heads of infants, forcing them into a new shape. They have to start at an early age, before the bones of the skull fuse into place. In Imperial China, small feet made a woman more desirable. So generations of women endured the painful practice of foot binding. The feet of young girls were broken and then tightly wrapped with strips of cloth to keep them from growing normally. The process left them permanently crippled. Their tiny shoes were prized as objects of art and their deformed feet were considered highly erotic. It's easy for us to condemn these practices as barbaric. But not so long ago, women in Europe and America went through similar tortures. The corsets of a hundred years ago could squeeze women into the ideal hourglass shape with a 13-inch waist. But over the years, corsets went from high fashion to farce. <laughs>